We're gonna do something a little different for the stream. We're not even gonna make you boys wait. Welcome to the stream. It's your host with the most, Reginaldus. And I have a, a, a historical episode for you guys. Historical. Um, yeah, I wanna give a shout outs to uh, Melt for making this possible. I wanna give a shout outs to um, Astro Wolf uh, for trying to, you know, go ahead and um, get another player that um, couldn't make it. Um, but, you know, shout outs to Astro Wolf, guys. Definitely check out his channel. Melt, guys, definitely check out the Melt's channel. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put uh, their channels on the stream right now so that you can see uh, some of the people that made this possible, what we have here today. You know, this uh, Ark of War thing is a community effort. Um, it's not a one-man show, and I just have to show that love to the people that makes it possible. So Melt, the GOAT, you know what I'm saying? I definitely believe Melt is the uh, Michael Jordan of Ark of War. This man has done it. He has set, he laid, for, laid the, the groundwork, all the basics, and we just work off of that. So definitely, um, and also if you're into um, home improvement, uh, into construction, um, definitely check out his channel. That's what his new endeavor is, and I support him on that. And you can still get all the great, greatest Ark of War videos ever created here on his channel. All right. Also, um, you can find that from my channel right here. Just go straight down from the home page. Go to Reginaldus uh, Featured Arc of War Channels. And then we also have uh, Sabin Dimitrov, uh, another Arc of War player who uh, tried to make uh, things happen on a bigger scale, but it's still mo monumentous what we're going to have here. It's still going to be historical. And without further ado, I want to bring my two guests on that we have here today. Uh, we have none other than um, Otter and Derange87. Let's go ahead and get... Um, Otter, go ahead and give the people your intro, brother. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, first time here on the stream. I think I should show up. Thankfully, uh, our host could arrange a different and much better time for me. So, looking forward to this today. Absolutely, absolutely. And one of the, matter of fact, I'm going to go to his channel. <laughs> and uh, the second person that we have here is one, no other than... Um, the man, the myth, the legend, Deranged, 87, Deranged. Give the people your intro, brother. Welcome to World of Walkers, where we talk about walkers and all things Ark of War. It is good to be doing a cameo, a little showback, a little throwdown. Uh, missed you guys, love you guys. I am active in the game. Uh, it's It's been a, a lot of fun getting back into with a lot of the new gear. Uh, a lot of the new commanders, um, dynamics, talents, uh, when you're talking about competing at a, at a high level. Um, I'm excited to get into some of the uh, dynamics that we're going to be looking into today. Absolutely, and thank you. I see the, the showmanship has not left this man one bit, man. And I've been a follower of this man's uh, channel, as you guys can see it on the stream. Uh, subscribe to his channel. You can find it on my channel. All right, it's Deranged87, Arc of War. Seriously. One of the greatest episodes that you have on your channel, the range, and I'm so glad that you that you made it available for everybody, was the uh, where is it right here? ZGL training video, guys. Seriously, some of the formations and tactics talked about in that video. I don't think anybody has ever created a video about uh, formation tactics as the range covered in this. Also, he was the best uh, to cover uh, uh, Elf at it at Elf at like many stages of her. Look at the videos here, a Medusa farming awakening materials and i still to this day if you guys have not checked out this video on deranges channel it's literally one of the best videos for if you're going to do a uh, ggm uh guild uh, general mobilization this guy stone run that he does is the one-stop guide you don't need to go anywhere else i literally was watching it this other i was literally watching it this weekend when i went and got um phantom pants so um yeah Deranges, do you want to go ahead and um uh, recommend any videos from your channel just in case anybody <laughs> Man, you know, it's funny because these were uh, just really basic strat. And uh, honestly, some of the dynamics have changed a little bit. But for the most part, uh, I mean, you know, when you're going for the Geist run, you know, Geist Stone, uh, which was, you know, kind of the weekend mobility. I mean, you were looking at spending three to five hundred thousand gold back in the day. And, you know, today there's just they've made it so easy to go through a lot of the events um, to to be able to. Uh, compete and get what you need. Um, plus, they put so many so many better uh, items out there that really spread the load. So at the end of the day, um, you're you're not 
you, you don't have uh, every big going for the same thing every week. You can really kind of stagger it out and kind of predict which ones are going to be high, which ones are going to be low. Um, I do like the ZGL training. That's uh, some of the early day training. We were the underdogs, believe it or not. And, um, you know, we were coming in with a skeleton crew and having to figure out how to really pull out some of these points wins to be able to get uh, that that uh, uh, late game sleeper showing uh, that we were able to pull off. Um, you know, Dragon Slayer, you know, is still a beast. Uh, Hancock has been nerfed in many ways. So a lot of these, you know, a, a lot of the dynamics that you see here, King, uh, has a totally different build than when I was, you know, playing with back then. We were really beginning and, you know, mid tier, uh, just approaching kind of top tier 50 sets, you know, of gear and what that looked like and what the dynamics were between infantry and walkers and walkers in air. Uh, and then, you know, SWE. And we we're still, as a community, still figuring out how SWE worked, what the formula was. Uh, the devs were really. Uh, slow to, to reveal some of that information, held their cards tight. Um, you, you know, we were figuring out the game dynamics of uh, GB and uh, Galactic Battle and trying to, uh, you know, first strike and um, and then the gyms. And, you know, now you've got, I mean, when you talk about Broken Fortress, when you talk about, uh, you know, three sets of the new red gear and what that allows you to have as far as first strike and, and, and the dynamic there. Um, there is an ever changing presence in this game. These are really good videos. If you are starting out and you want to understand what are the basic principles of this game, where we came from, what you'll find is as you start going through the videos, you're going to find that some of these things no longer apply, but at least you know where it came from and what they changed and why. Um, you know, we were talking about just the video that he has up here, you know, we're talking about different formations, um, you know, uh, from, you know, four slot to one slot to, you know, there was Walker formations where, you know, if you're going against a Walker, take the first three, and then you're going to get first strike with the four slot. Um, yeah, uh, full metal was kind of the new commander on, on the game at that point in this video. Uh, so, you know, being able to take away. A lot of the uh, self buffs that was a big deal. Um, you know, Stella uh, has and always will uh, be with Wings of Eternity, one of the best commanders in the game. Uh, putting wings on any other commander out there uh, is is still uh, probably meta for infantry. Um, yeah, so it's it's interesting some of the dynamics that haven't changed. Infantry with wings is is always going to be a big hit. You're always going to have. Dragon Slayer slash Black in that combo is your power hitters. Um, and, and that's kind of your entry level cheap, you know, commanders as long as you can get that 100% uh, uh, penetration that's going to make it make it hard. Um, these formations work really, really well against air. So this is what I used to call the, uh, oh, what did I call this? The battering ram. Uh, when you would use the void skaters to be able just from their HP, you went HP heavy. So there was a lot of defense on this. But when an air uh, commander would hit this formation specifically, it would take the three uh, small walkers, uh, the T1 walkers out, and it would leave just a battering ram of void skaters that would create a center hole in whatever we were facing. And it would be points positive, but we'd be able to get through. And once we got through uh, at that point, um, then it was just a cat and mouse game of being able to maintain the points leads. And we'd catch a lot of the uh, the larger guilds, um, you know, heavier players at the time off guard uh, with just simple things like this. You know, we weren't even maxing out our leadership. Uh, and, and that was always going to be the fun. Your first guild is always going to be the one you remember, the panic, the anxiety, the adrenaline, um, you know, figuring out some new formation or new combination that gives you just a little bit of an edge, whether it's, you know, you finally got your sweet set or whether it's you you were able to, um, oh, what's the skill where you hit one of the little guys on the front row and it destroys something big on the back? Man, the first time you get hit with that, you go, man, that that sucks. <laughs> you know? Are you referring to um, what's your guy's name? Um, that Walker Commander? Um, yes, yes, it's um, Nick uh, Nick Wang. Yeah, it's literally the only thing that it's useful for. Is some dev got pissed off at my formations and I don't know dropped a new commander because it's a useless commander. But man, that skill. On these against these formations, they figured it out. 
um, this would survive two or three rounds, what we're looking at now. So, you know, you take the risk of getting hit, but you also um, statistically are going to win more than you lose, you know, with, with a formation like this. Absolutely. And uh, thank you for that um, big breakdown. Like like uh, Doreen said, there's some uh, things on his channel that are outdated, but at the end of the day, there's tactics there that will teach you the foundations of this game. Like, you can't skip about, like, you can't go, oh, um, I'll just throw down a whole bunch of bread and just become tier 12. But you don't know formations. You don't know one slot bust. One slot bust is just like the most common talked about formation. But um, in that video, once again, it's the ZGL training video. I'm serious. Like, well, nobody has covered and, formations like and this. Here, and here's what I'll say is you keep watching these commanders. I covered these commanders that I have on here for a reason because they have great potential. The only thing that they don't have is is the gear to support it. And I think some of these commanders, like um, uh, Kid, you know, um, you know, will come back. I think that uh, uh, Nekajiro, mm -hmm. um, you know, that you're going to see a, a, a real – come back with Nekajiro. Hancock at some point will have a comeback. If they took Hoodoo and gave him a piece of gear that worked like Plasma's gear to where it would multiply the uh, the, the hit that, uh, that Hoodoo uh, brings, the death rattle. Mm -hmm. See, the death rattle, the issue with it is it's, it's, uh, it's capped at 200% of normal attack damage. And, and when you figure out the dynamics of this game, you can really break down uh, the damage, the crit, the crit wither, um, the HP. There are formulas you can create on Excel. You can go in there and recreate the formulas and play the what if game. Um, but anything that says you know two hundred percent, you know, normal attack damage. I mean, those are all going to be loser skills at this point in the game, at this level in the game, mm -hmm. um, because you're you're just never going to be able to um, uh, to compete. Um, with, you know, ignore damage reduction skills. Um, those are the ones that you want to be looking for to play with more. If you can stack those with 100% penetration um, or percent of HP is gone, I mean, it just depends on who you're facing and what you're facing. Um, but, you know, sister skill, right? Mm -hmm. Sister Wolf, you want to pull sister up. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is one of the hardest hitting skills in the game with quick draw. You know, once you are able to make uh, a little bit of dent in your enemy, this just bleeds the target uh, target dry. It's based off of lost HP, and it ignores damage reduction. Um, the newest commander in the game um, for for walkers, in, in my opinion, when you go to yep uh, era, yep exactly. And when you start talking about uh, this, is what if you notice a lot of my early videos, I ran Pictor, and Pictor was a beast. Uh, Pictor, yeah. you were the, um, yeah, you were the premier Pictor. People saw Pictor, <laughs> yeah. they already knew. <laughs> And, and I and I would love to see Pictor make a comeback. It's just in this meta, uh, outside of maybe T11 and mid tier, you know, to high tier in certain uh, situations, you could run T11 wings on Pictor and, and still run a very uh, effective uh, Pictor if um, you've got 100% penetration, but you're still lacking against damage reduction, and that's the issue with Pictor. Well, that's what you see comes back with with Era, uh, Era in the very same way has the very same skill as it's like if Pictor and King had a baby. <laughs> like, yeah. And the spawn of devil came from an era. And that's what you see is, is, you know, it's a King hit with a Pictor skill and it ignores the damage reduction. They want to talk about King. I'm talking about the mind's eye um, because you're, you're really talking about, and again, you see that 300% normal damage to target, but it ignores damage reduction. So that's the combo that you're looking for. If you can get rid of the, uh, you know, damage uh, limiter on there, the governor on that, uh, you're going to see, you know, much more damage that's out there. And we've seen commanders in the past that have done that. Um, and then they've gone back and, and kind of nerfed them a bit. Right now, it's, it's you don't see them nerf commanders so much like they did in the past. What you see is the uh, release gear that makes it more even or jewels that make it more even or talents or um, new commanders. And they figure out what the counter is to the commander they have now. Um, but if I'm going to run, if I had to pick between King, Pictor, and Era, I'd probably run Era with, you know, King gear, two soul cutters, uh, T11 uh, wings. Um, the issue is, is that uh, if you've maxed out Hyper 10 on your accuracy, you, it's, you are going to hit every single time um, air commanders that run no dodge. And so, you know, actually, it's, it's interesting, you commanders out there, that have an arc with maybe hyper, you know, three hyper four, 
um, maybe Hyper 5. You're pushing it with Hyper 5. But if you're in that range, this is the commander you want to run because you can go, you know, uh, uh, max it out, um, you know, with 100% penetration and you're going to miss every time against air commanders. And so um, you actually have a slight advantage in the game. A top tier player like myself that has Hyper 10 on everything, I, it's it's useless to me because if they're running a Rochi or you know, Reinhardt or somebody that has a heavy crit with or no dodge, I'm going to hit them every single time so I won't get the after effect of that damage reduction hit. Um, so I, I think just jumping in, that that's uh, a little bit of the playing field. Um, Elf is still a beast. I mean, it's expensive to run. You've got to get your max AI bot. Uh, status quo, I think, is, is a good one for Elf. Um, if you're, look, you want to run a poor man's commander? Find anything that you like and run preemptive on it and have fun. Figure <laughs> out what the dynamic is there. But preemptive is, is the one of the best poor man skill you can throw on something. Absolutely. And real quick, I want to digress. Um, thank you so much, man. Uh, the range. Strong opening, bro. Strong, like the showmanship uh, in you has not left at all. Once again, like I have to say, man, it sounds like, dude, you could still make content to this day, man. And we would all tune in. Seriously. Uh, that was such a strong opening guys as you can hear the man knows what he's talking about i showed you his channel i'll pull it up one last time follow this man's channel i'm telling you you will not waste your time Th these are foundations that you need to have just to move forward but let me go back to um uh otter real quick otter can you go ahead and just tell us um you know uh your arc in-game name um you know uh your what got you into arc of war uh, your in-game name and then what got you into arc of war all right so i mean obviously i'm this cute animal the otter <laughs> uh, kind of switching names like every bigger event or fight. Last week I renamed my arc to Nega Duck, the villain from Darkwing Duck. <laughs> uh, in in Las Casitan I was Officer Barbrady from South Park. So it's just the name itself is just a meme at this point. Um, but I mean, from the the profile picture here in Discord and also in the line group, you can identify it. Uh, I'm this this uh, adorable animal. Um, what got me into this uh, game? Uh, I was playing something else, and you know they offered uh, in-game premium currency if you play. I was sticking with it, and it was like three years ago. Mm. So, and since that day, I was logging in every single day. I haven't missed a single uh, login reward. Right, right, and I, I absolutely agree with you on um, as far as Ark of War. Uh, being a more entertaining game, I, I like. There's a lot of phone games I've played, like you know, Clash, um, Clash Royale, uh, League of Legends, Wild Rift. Um, man, I, I just played a lot, but nothing gets your heart pumping. I think the range would also agree with me. I think everybody here agrees with uh, with me on this one. Nothing gets your heart pumping like when you see invaders on march in your arc. Boy, that that's a different feeling, yeah. man. <laughs> every single red notification even it's just uh, the uh, awakening state is about to expire it's like what red notification my heart my heart yeah because you know um but i think um on my uh video recently um, when i was giving the news updates and everything um and i was talking about um gc18 and how chn had just recently won then one of the things that i said in the video was i do believe that this is one of the hardest cell phone games to play um, and you know, this is why we're kind of a niche community because you risk your account. You know what I mean? There's people that get, uh, correct me if I'm not, uh, if I'm not, uh, if, if I'm wrong, go ahead and correct me, but I'm pretty sure I've heard of people getting, uh, you can get zeroed in uh, GC, right? Um, if you're so stupid and leave the game before you start the healing, yes. Yeah, thank yeah. You. there you go. <laughs> so, yes, um, I just wanted to make sure I was correct on that because I definitely heard of people getting zero before. So, like, think about that. Like, in GC, you can have no shield, you know what I mean? And you can quite possibly get zeroed. Um, yeah, if you're stupid, once again, and you don't leave the game. Uh, but at the end of the day, everything about this game is risky. The moment you it's drop your... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not so much a zero. You you kind of zero yourself if you don't start the healing process. Let's say that you started the healing process with a small amount of troops, and then you just get rammed all the way through, and uh, you've got all these troops in your med bay. When you leave, mm -hmm. all those troops that are in your med bay, now you have to pay resources to be able to heal them. If somebody starts hitting you after you have those troops in your uh, in your med bay, when you get out and back into the into uh, your main planet. Uh, yeah, all of those are massacred. Go to shelter, and anything over shelter is just gone. Yeah, 
And I know it's happened. Yes, you'd have to be dumb, but hey, things happen. Things happen. So emotions are. <laughs> yeah, dumb, dumb or drunk, and I think drunk and Ark of War go together. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people have quit <laughs> Ark of War. <laughs> quit drinking uh, because of Ark of War, and that's how. But serious... drinking is cheaper than Ark of War. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. But um, let me get let me go ahead and get deranged on that question too, and then I'm gonna move on to like you know um, if you guys remember your first zeroing deranged, uh, you know tell us your in-game name and uh, tell us you know what got you into Ark of War. Uh, yeah, in-game name is Deranged87. Um, you know, I, I picked up Ark of War uh, early on in, uh, Lord, uh, probably 2016, uh, if not sooner. And I've uh, been playing with uh, the uh, old ZGL guys. Before that was uh, Tut, kind of Planet 209. Um, and we've just kind of jumped around as kind of this Black Ops a Special Forces uh, team. And I think that that's part of what the, really makes this game is the people that you play it with uh, and, you know, are learning each other's habits, learning each other's um, strengths and weaknesses and uh, being able to mobilize together to be able to help fill the need of wherever you're at. And there is a certain, you know, progression to this game that you start out on a planet and you realize that you can only go so far alone. If you want to go far, you go together and, you know, you start saying, okay, who are the people that want to play at a more competitive level? And you just naturally start gravitating towards um, that level of play. And there is, you know, when you get to the high level, um, as far as, uh, as far as um, getting on one of the super planets where you have these guilds that are just totally, completely, uh, focused on galactic battle, um, you see a lot of the server side kind of go away. There's one or two offs, um, but mainly everybody is focused on, you know, building, on, you know, developing, testing, uh, and, and that's a style of play. We have plenty of people that get bored with that style, and they will go back and try to switch to a different planet that they can be competitive. Or, uh, <laughs> interesting enough, you'll see a lot of people that will go back and restart accounts from the beginning because those beginning stages are just so much fun. And if you kind of know the knowledge that you know now um, and you get on a planet, you can be the leader of that planet uh, really early on. And there's some perks and benefits to that too. Perfect, perfect. And um, let me see, I don't think you got the chance here. So uh, currently currently sitting in win, and we do play with CHN as well. Okay, yes, perfect. Thank yep. you for uh, the follow-up of <laughs> uh, the guilds. And uh, let me ask you, Derange, uh, do you remember the your first zeroing, or you know, did you get zeroed first? Like, which which one happened first to really light the fire under your butt? Like, yo, I'm going, I'm taking this game serious. Like, what what got you hooked that moment? You know, um, so I remember early on there was a moment where, and this was you know within the first uh, couple weeks of play, and you could see the uh, nationalistic divide, you know, within the game pretty quick, and. Uh, we're still trying to figure out what trumpet meant and you know all that other stuff and uh uh so there was kind of that language barrier and you could see as we were trying to figure out early on in the game i, I remember uh still trying to be free to play which lasts only so long in this game mm -hmm. um but i i was i'm sitting there and um i'm watching my buddy fair you know he's uh getting hit uh by this uh chinese guild and um and and it, he's and they're coming in on him and i had just uh kind of upgraded one of my commanders and so i remember uh actually as they were coming in on him uh speed rushing and putting myself in into uh the hole uh, as a garrison um and you know winning that round and it was this thing of you know it was the game of inches right they were talking so much smack and so that, that was that was one of the first times that i felt that rush of oh my god i pulled it off we planned this together and the coordination between he and I for him to drop his shield and me to rush in right before their march got there. And, you know, I think that arrogance is the biggest downfall in this game. Uh, all it takes is dropping your shield. All it takes is, you know, passing out one time, leaving a garrison in, uh, in your hole and uh, coming out of galactic battle, not realizing it as you're sitting there doing a regular battle, there's always going to be someone bigger, badder, better. Um, Absolutely. That, that that's competing. In that same note, I want to just put this on stream to show people, yes, arrogance will get you slaughtered. I don't know if you see it on stream. Let me, can I get a bigger pick? There we go. Arrogance will get you slaughtered. This man thought, I have 50 gear. Ain't no way I'm about to lose to this hoodoo. 
<laughs> and that did not go as planned. And, you know, uh, he got a wake up call and lost a whole bunch of I agree. But that's just an example of uh, to prove, you know, um, there are tactics in this game that you have to be aware about. People can catch you slipping. And uh, just because you're the server boss doesn't mean that you can sit around no shield. Ha ha ha, I don't have to spend gold on shields. You think so until that bullet main catches you slipping, until that rock main catches you slipping. You know what I mean? Until that guild go ahead and sends a mass raid, uh, you know, sends a mass raid uh, at your at your base, uh, you know, at your garrison. So um, I absolutely agree with what he's saying. And and that's what we live for. We live for that for that moment that somebody thinks they know everything in the game. They can just drop shield. They can do you disrespect. And once you disrespect, you know what I mean? It's um, it's a one conversation away from people gold jumping right to where you live. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll say probably one of the most dangerous uh, environments is Syntican. And, you know, as you start playing out there, especially with Reinhardt and T2 and you know, you just have a, a, a lot more players that are involved and engaged. Um, it's real easy to get caught slipping. And, you know, Reinhardt, man, that'll take, you know, $6,000, $10,000 worth of troops and, and one mistake Absolutely. right there if, you, if you're not careful. Absolutely. And, uh, Honor, let's go ahead and get your uh, story. Uh, what, what happened first? Did you zero somebody or did somebody zero you? Or was it an epic tale of, like, cooperation and family guild that really lit the fire under you to be like yo i'm taking this game serious i'm going to the next level mm, until this day i don't take it serious <laughs> and i never got zeroed mm -hmm. um have you zeroed I, anybody yes of course now, how tell um, us about your but, first zeroing what did you yeah, feel when I, you... I was just thinking about this uh, actually i met this guy just recently again on the server i'm in right now mm -hmm. um so he rebuilt his troops um, it was on what, 1268, I think, mm -hmm. uh, like two years ago. And he was in uh, like a guild. I would say it's called uh, like Brandy Kids. Mm -hmm. Always shit talking, but uh, actually not so good players, to say it the nice way. And he was moving his arc to uh, one capital with shield. And that capital would open a couple hours later. And when the capital opened, he was without shield and offline. So I just hit him and he was zeroed. He was not amused because he had this uh, auto garrison. I just wow. hit him until there was nothing left. And what tier was he at? Uh, tier 9, I think. Oh. Oh. Back in the day, no shelter. And of course, if you start hitting uh, small, then of course something goes into the med bay. But he was in a normal uh, hole, like no med bay, nothing. Mm -hmm. Probably not even a med bay event, so really small capacity, and it was gone. Jesus Christ! And that's did he did he play after that? Did he does he still play? Yeah, he was crying hard. Oh, okay, he <laughs> was really really mad, and he left the server afterwards. Oh my God! You see, and that's 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 our award. It's finest. You know what I mean? Don't let us yeah. catch you slipping. <laughs> All right, and um, let me see here. Uh, Ari, I think you um, you were going to go ahead and throw up some battles, right? You want to go ahead and... Uh... Yeah. Um, uh, perfect. And while he does... What, mm -hmm. what should we go first? Uh, probably something less tactical, more uh, just raw numbers, maybe? You know what? Uh, what do you guys want to do right now? I, I'm, I was going to show the, um, the old uh, commander cards, and we can just go straight off of like old commander cards to that doesn't work, this is what's new. You know, from the both of you guys, like, you know, um, I think that's the best way to start it. So I'm just going to go over, you know, the commander cards. You can go ahead and pull it up, uh, share screen, and then I'll go ahead and swap it over to you. Okay. But, um, um, yeah, I'm just going to go over Sharing the screen, let me see. Perfect. Share screen. And uh, these are some opinion. of the uh, old commander cards. Um, shout outs to Natsu uh, for doing this stuff, uh, putting that out there. I like he put the AI bots. Um, the only thing I think that's off about these uh, commander cards is that... Uh, we know, for example, that uh, Iris should be running tier eleven. I don't know why they didn't put it there. They kind of wanted to make it. They really don't. They don't know what they're doing, bro. Yeah, yeah. They wanted no, to make it. No, this is from day one. From day one, these are they. They take what they think they see, mm -hmm. and they try to create something from it. But I mean, when you go back to Sweetcock, I'll dude, I'll jump on that one. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean that because that was a brainchild of ZGL. You know, with the actual sweet cock, we were really putting this together, trying to figure out, um, you know, the the math on it, 
and we would see these guys go nuclear. And um, there's a couple of, of uh, it, it doesn't work anymore so, per se, because when you get absolute defense, um, that was the response to the Sweetcock that we had brought in uh, was the absolute def uh, defense. But when you talk about running T11 on Hancock, um, you know, with Swee, uh, you're, you're hitting it two different ways. If you can survive long enough, you're going to, you know, destroy their, um, their defense down when you go to the attack formula. It doesn't even matter what your attack is. There's a certain point where the defense starts getting below the number one. And when it does, your damage is exponential. And so that's the math behind, you know, the Sweetcock um, on that. But, you know, typically you're going to want to run um, probably, you know, you, you've got the, the uh, sweet pants. Uh, that's correct. Um, you're going to want a lot of dodge, you know, so that you're not getting hit by, uh, um, you know, HP, uh, the, like void skaters uh, and whatnot. You're going to want to, um, you know, run uh, the roses is what I like to run, but you can run destruction uh, depending upon how much sweet you need. Um, and then depending upon what they have is, is RWE. I, I like your headpiece there. Can you click on that? The headpiece? Uh, yeah, hold on. Yeah, and this is the new one that um, everybody looks at and goes, wow, that's, that's amazing, right? Because now you've got the SWE with the penetration. And when you're able to max out your penetration and you're able to have the SWE, you're going to see a lot better results in a shorter period of time. Uh, again, against absolute defense, it creates it to where it's not going to go below one. So you don't see the exponential damage that you saw. Um, so that that's probably going to be your main loss. And then, of course, uh, just trying to survive long enough um, to be able to, to let it go nuclear. What are your thoughts? Uh, I can show you something ridiculous. Uh, with SWE, without SWE, it's kind of kind of stupid. Um, first of all, with this new headpiece, you get 240 SWE with the commander talent that was added like a couple of weeks ago, you get another 50% sweet. With right. the Virgo gems, you get 30%, and then you run Gabriel Hole, and you're suddenly above 400%, and if there's an airship commander running zero resistance weekend, and he sees, oh, he has this gear, let's say I have different pants, yeah, I switch to trigger pants. Nobody expects you to get sweet by this setup. Right? Mm -hmm. Is it, look at it. Yeah, you don't recognize he could have enough sweet. Yeah, absolutely right. Is go ahead and click it on it. Be really dangerous. Otter, go ahead and click on the um the upgrade thing, the uh, S. You know what I'm talking about the new upgrade that you were just saying where you get the 50 sweet. Oh yeah, the so they can see it. Scroll all the way to the bottom. Yeah, he's absolutely right. Right there, when you max out these commanders, you have 50 percent more sweet. So uh, I, I don't know if you, you, you can run through that math here. one more time. Can you run through that math uh, one more time? You said it was that. Yeah, plus... you get. Mm -hmm. Of course, you need to have at level fifty. Yeah, it's. I know it's expensive or it takes a lot of time, but you know you get two hundred forty plus thirty from Virgo plus fifty from uh, the talent, and then eighty-seven from the Gabriel hole. That's four hundred and seven percent. Yeah, that's exactly enough to sweep anybody without resistance weekend. Absolutely, and then the key thing there that I love that he brought up. Um, even if they saw your gear, like if somebody lost to this, they're going to be like, oh, okay, let's go ahead and break down how to beat him real quick. This is the troops that he has. Out. They're not even going to think sweet. And they're just going to keep getting sweet until they realize that they need to switch it up. And then go ahead and break down the rest. Uh, I see we have uh, damage. We have some penetration. What's going on? It's kind of ridiculous, this build. Um, if you, if you, I change the hull now to a trigger hull. Mm -hmm. um, you see it's not even maxed. That's how poor I am. <laughs> So you just check the percentage on this one here. It's ninety nine point zero five percent. Shit. And I can even go higher with a higher level, get mm -hmm. more bonus from the fifty set. But my real goal is to get the trigger weapon, the Mercury from the Sun Raven set. Right. And you can imagine if this guy triggers Wings of Eternity every single slot five times, and you have Ferro Strength with fifty percent. Yeah, Hancock is back. <laughs> and then check, check the gem. Uh -huh. And you see it's uh, Andromeda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 20%. You have five chances to trigger it. There's a, a high chance to get the one Andromeda trigger every time when, you're, when your turn goes on. Mm -hmm. So you disable the full front row. And if he doesn't have a back row, he might never even 
fight back the enemy. It's kind of ridiculous. But you will see you will see the 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 counter to this is being built in and um you know with especially against walker commanders i mean hancock's always going to pretty much be useless um in, unless certain situations because of cassiopeia because of the new talents that give you the um the the um uh the skill that you can um uh what's the skill called it's uh where you um can you pull uh, it, can you, yeah, oh, Arda, can, yeah Arda, can you pull up the talents uh now i'm gonna show the battle oh okay yeah my bad my bad go ahead to prove him wrong, oh, because it's, all good, it's really good. crazy what this guy can do with the right talents. Uh, I'm gonna switch to the reap because you're because you're working off of uh, infantry talents at this point with T11, correct? No, no, no. Let me show you. You see here, it's. Uh, do you see it? The yeah, 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 I see it. it. Yeah, we see so it. scroll down a little because bit. Let's see what the talent. loss is, and let's go ahead and play, and we'll kind of break down what's happening. So you see here the formation. Well, yeah, okay, but that's you've got an elf that's running one one row. Of course, there. I mean, you got six rows of uh, Hancock. You're going to be able to get, especially with the new Walker talent. If you're running the Walker talent that makes them skip a turn plus Andromeda, uh, yeah, statistically this is a loser. And if they're running that much on the front yes. row, exactly. uh, they need to have at least one back row slot on slot four. Uh, preferably six slots when it comes to Elf. You never run a three slot on Elf. He, he never got even a chance to fight. Back. No, not at all. And any infantry commander pretty much could have that same potential if they're a disabled commander. Yeah, could you this make it one will also work. This mm -hmm. one will work also against preemptive and counter streams. Because the power of walkers uh, mm -hmm. makes the front row, my tier 10, immune. They Correct. can go completely off with wings. At some point, they're gonna trigger Cassiopeia. Uh, hopefully, they will miss. If not, uh, I hope for an Andromeda trigger. But usually, if somebody runs uh, preemptive, he's re uh, very dodgy. So I can disable his entire front row. And I just have to hope that I get enough Ferro strength triggers that his attack is zero at the point his back row can start fighting. And that happened in uh, in the last cast of ten. Yeah, and that's like, and that's why you have the fourth uh, fourth slot is so that you can stack Cassiopeia and take away every feral strength you know trigger that you've had already, uh, and it restarts it to to zero. Um, but if they've got if if Elf is running the talent, uh, Elf has the immunity. That's the word I was looking for. Immunity. Um, the immunity is is such a Walker specific skill um, that this is such a this would be a rare occurrence unless. It's somebody running three slots front row. Um, let's say he triggers. Uh, he has like different types. Yeah, he has power of walkers in the front row. Um, if he has them power of walkers, he still gets disabled by the talent, the, the stun, whatever it's called. It has a, such a strange name. Uh, nothing will protect him against it. His turn will skip. You're talking about the interference field where they yeah. skip their next action, yeah. It, and if you run that all the way up, it maxes out. What does it max out at? At 100? 100 percent. Oh my god, that's yeah. awesome. That's Jesus. I will Christ. get it at some point. I'm at 80 percent right now. It's still amazing. So if you're not hitting them, you're disabling them, and you're skipping their entire front row. Then it's six rows versus three, and that is the advantage of walkers right now. Yeah. And the thing is, I like uh, that you ran T10 T10 walkers. Um, to uh, to to be able to get the infantry skill on that. that that's a really good build. And yeah. if you see the dim light, it's so evil because <laughs> the enemy is already debuffed and the dim light will just snowball the damage. Wow. Yeah, he has so much damage reduction. I cannot reduce his, uh, uh, his defense or it, I cannot get enough damage to one-shot him. But instead, I just go for a very long battle Mm -hmm. That's why it caps here at like two minutes. It it took me like five minutes at least. So like ten rounds. But he will just lose due to dim light. Yeah, no, that that's very, very impressive. Like I, I'm surprised you even brought something out of that magnitude, man. That's like that's usually the secret weapon that the you know the guild leaders be like, don't ever show anybody that <laughs> Here you see the talent. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even have the first one because it's pointless uh, against whatever it is there and then the infantry um there's some something to to make make it better to improve it yeah you don't need precise strike 
preferably you run the, the first of the second tree that does more damage, and then you run the last one, the super thermal bomb or whatever it is, because it uh, ignores HP buffs. So, you're so, you, even so we're so we're with the new Walker talents, and you combine that with the infantry. You're you're pretty much saying throw wings on there, and you've got one of the best disabled commanders in the game. Yes, and I was running this on Ira against airship commanders, and it's. But you ran into you ran into the same problem that I ran into. If they yeah, if they dodge, it's fine. <laughs> if they, if they, if they don't, don't dodge, dodge and they fight them. and they can not dodge. If you have, if you're just toe to toe, even to even. So again, uh, this is where you see middle tier players actually have the advantage that are only hyper four, hyper five, or, or less. I'd say hyper four to be safe, and yeah. just don't upgrade your accuracy. Don't uh, upgrade your accuracy. Don't I upgrade have, your uh, past hyper four or five, and you should be safe. You see, my accuracy for infantry and walker, the, the tech itself is maxed. Hyperspace Walker is maxed, but infantry is really low. So this would be a good one if you went air um, to work with Lady and the Beast, and you know to go that route because you don't have the accuracy, you know, built up on that arc. Absolutely. Maybe, but I would need to build airships, and I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of Walker. And they have shitty talents. Hmm. So that okay, that's the first time I'm hearing, you know, um, of airship not having the best uh, talents, uh, or at least the best of anything. But I think uh, I, I, I bet they got the best commanders in the game. Yeah, when it they comes do. To <laughs> power hit. I mean, let's be honest. Black right now is is OP. Um, you know, Dragon Slayers OP. I mean, I, I'm really kind of going. I want to take the biggest damage reduction build. I want to build the build that will gonna have the best ability to take a hit. And in the game, I think I have that commander, and I have that setup, and I will still lose horribly to a black or a dragon slayer with the right triggers. Um, yeah. Um, here you can see the same build with more oh, troops in the back row, and I completely lost. And he doesn't even have uh, absolute defense, so there's no chance. If the the, the oh, enemy so has really see... low research or, or random gear, I would say uh, it's not going to work. It's actually something that you need. You need a strong enemy to fight it. Yeah, if we see it here, uh, probably dodge awakened. If I remember correctly, no, nope. sounds no about way right. He will, he will win this battle. I, I even have the wrong gems. Yeah, I have Taurus gems because I run it on Hancock. But that that slot is just destroying everything. So in situations like that where uh, Ira can't get the enemy to dodge, that would be the same situation for King, right? Where that same enemy King wouldn't be able to miss. And That's so correct. That's correct. So King, so King and Ira, you know, fall in that same category. With same with Lady and the Beast, that if they uh, hit, then the the commander is is absolutely useless. And you know, really. Um, Lady and the Beast has a little bit better of an opportunity to uh, uh, competitive advantage because air has less accuracy um, versus infantry. And so when you're running infantry troops on King uh, or on Ira, you're going to run into that problem to where you could lose on a matchup you think that you're going to win. Yeah, King has a problem since he can only fight one slot. He will lose this battle. Yeah. He can destroy this slot here, but I can destroy everything now. And if he has Ira, I would just completely go d down. He would just destroy my whole march. That's why Ira is so much better than King. Because mm -hmm. given the chance to strike, she's going to destroy everything. She's damn near the Walker Dragon Slayer. Yeah, look, I run pure glass cannon. Uh, I was chuckling a little bit when the range said, yeah, preemptive is uh, like something for the, 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 the Jeep. Solution for the the poor ones. Yeah, poor man's poor poor, yeah. poor man's uh, uh, slot in. It's amazing. I mean, so I used to run this back before um, back when Void Skaters had just came out, and the HP was the real damage on it. I'd run a couple of those, you know, ram slots, and uh, go into a tower. Throw. Uh, I would run walkers on Gilly. And I would just throw the walkers on Gilly and let Void Skaters just 
I mean, eat away at their one slots because preemptive was killing, you know, so many commanders at the time. Uh, and this might have been predated even penetration, you know, but uh, <laughs> if, if there is such a thing, right? Um, but yeah, back in the day, that was, you know, kind of the biggest, baddest, best thing that was coming out. But now, I mean, on the math side of it, I would love if somebody out there, you know, took the time to really put together um, all the stats and, you know, kind of, you know, the builds on, you know, the crit, crit wither, you know, the different combinations. You have so many moving parts. Every commander, when you choose, here's for, for you new guys coming up and looking for the best build that's coming out. Um, it takes a lot for a big uh, build arc to transition from one commander to another gears gems jewels you name it and once you're committed down a line of of research or um commander uh it, it's um new players really have the advantage that are coming up and willing to put the time and money to be able to spend uh and and double down on it here's what i want you to think about every time you commit to a certain gear pattern um you got to think not what you're getting you got to think what are you giving up because that's where your weakness is going to be. And there's always a commander out there that's going to be able to counter that specific weakness. Um, and, and so, you know, think about when you get creative with your builds, you're thinking about the troops, you're thinking about the troop talent, you're thinking about the skills, what goes for both walker and, and uh, infantry or walker and air. You know, how can you use this? You're thinking about SWE. Um, those are all, you know, issues and counters. You're talking about anti-hill skills with healing you know, uh, uh, commanders and troops, um, damage reduction, ignore damage reduction, all of that comes into play uh, and start building, you know, your commanders to be the next counter to what is the best now. But, you know, I mean, we're looking at this three piece on the gear. Um, amazing victory, by the way, even against the three piece red. Um, man, I would love to watch that replay. Yeah. Are they only running? Waiting for are, you to finish. Yeah, go ahead. No, this looks good. I'm in. It's again, Walker Talents. Absolutely. I will make it really slow. So again, preemptive. I have to hope he will not trigger crushing blow. I was gonna say there's a real risk here with yeah. a one slot bus, and that's gonna be the advantage that you have. A uh, uh, shout out to Kraken Chicken, um, but that's the advantage. Always a great player. Um, that's the advantage that you're gonna have with Dragon Slayer. You, you see what's happening? I can heal back. Yeah, that's the, the that is the new talent that that you have there, the healing field. Yeah, um, and the best part is it works even if my slot dies. Interesting. I can show it something against uh, a different march, and my slot gets completely wiped, and it gets revived completely. Um, and and so you want to run that in the front row, I would imagine. Yeah, I want to hit him as quickly as possible. So I don't so, want so so are, so even oh wow so so against the three piece gear the red gear that allows the ricochet damage would you then be able to heal after the ricochet damage what's yes. the order of operations here you're saying yes so I start hitting my normal attack against his first slot I take damage that damage gets applied to my slot I triggered awakening. Whatever survived the rebound damage causes the awakening damage on the next slot. Then I get rebound again. My troop count probably goes down. Uh, if he has a third slot, whatever is remaining from my attacking slot will trigger awakening damage on his slot. And then uh, probably I'm dead. But the healing starts right after my normal attack before the awakening damage gets applied to the rest. Yeah, no, that's sick, dude. That, that is but, it's, but it's after rebound. After the rebound damage from the new gear, you're able to heal even if you go to zero. God, I'd love to see a video on that if you got it. Let me see. Uh, where's the uh, infantry guy? Here. There you go. Yeah, let's see this. Yeah, like Kermit, uh, I mean, I like... he can't do shit, right? He has no hit skill. He can't do anything against me. I'm immune to his blinding strike. I don't care, so I can just go. And what? There. And what makes you immune to it? Your the first oh, round immunity. Yeah, first round immunity. Holy shit! 
don't know I if we cussed on this channel, but I just did. That was worth it. That was yeah, worth it. Yeah, that was worth it. Holy bro, that whole shit. slot came back. Bro, if you're not investing in this talent right here, right now, this as a Walker I commander on the front row, you're missing out. Also, yeah. I can heal a second time by power of walkers. Sure. Yeah, you got power that, of walkers. That, that um, was the second healing. It's still level one because I only wanted to gain the immunity. So you're doing the power of walkers with the immunity from round one and the healing field. And I mean, this looks like the perfect uh, matchup uh, on on the front line. Um, and so you are running your blue hunks on the front row because of the. Um, is there a specific reason? Is it has to do with the attack and then your your HP heal on it, or why why aren't uh, you running uh, time walkers? There's a really simple answer to that. I only have them. Okay, <laughs> there you go. Just curious, um, and, and but but on Sister Wolf. So just for context, Sister Wolf is really great with blue hunks up front because you want to be able to get the initial, even if it's just five or ten troops that you can take off that front row. Um, because you need to have something off of it for the the uh, HP skill to work. Uh, the quick, what is it? Quick. Uh, quick draw. Yep, quick draw. For for quick draw to work, you need to have them at least have a little bit of a chip. Well, and if you can get the chip before they go immune, you've got it. These hunks have a big advantage. They give the HP shield based on dealt damage. So if you're sitting in a cap with your blue hunks in first slot, and there's smart as dragon slayer main sending ranger first slot and putting his airship in slot four he will do shit because he cannot bypass my hp shield it's so huge when i hit a ranger he needs to have the, the formal hold to get through that if not he can't do anything and i'm just sitting there laughing at him and that's why i run the blue hunks i am very oh yep because you have the shield there um from from you hitting them, it makes it almost as if you're getting that immunity. I, yeah. I'm impressed. I'm impressed with some of the uh, defensive disable skills that you've kind of stacked here with some uh, non-traditional commanders that we wouldn't consider disable commanders. Um, I, I do see <laughs> much of your uh, uh, much of your opposition, though. Um, you, you would think wouldn't be running three slots. This one here got me really good. Because I and Ganji's a good player, man. He's he's one of the best in the game. He comes out I, with some great builds. I cannot dodge him. That's simply yeah. the reason. Yeah. So and, and this you is see something like full accuracy. You just tuck tail and run. And, and this is a player. this is a pretty up and coming meta build. So I've I've seen this. I know this this is this is a great example of uh, just some of the power that's out there. Um, yeah, I I do know some counters to this, but I'm interested to see. How your heal works on this go ahead and let's not see this all. replay not he at all why not first slot. i cannot dodge him why not oh because you can't dodge him yeah he you has too much accuracy nah you just need to go put some phantom pants on here yeah you need to to, to, to get rid of that uh that chest piece go with the walker chest piece throw on some phantom the uh pants well how much uh, hold on what's the well hold on it's called like invincible. You're talking about the invincible. This is uh, yes, invincible HP with dodge. Well, then... you would be you would be getting less dodge with that versus yeah. the um, yes versus the oh lord. Let me pull up my equipment sheet here. Yeah, he, it's been he, a while. Yeah, he, he's in the equipment tab right now. Maybe Phantom would help. Yes, I gain a little bit more dodge, but he has so much accuracy. He is maxed out on accuracy, and if yeah, he triggers you, you... The battle seasoned, I'm still screwed. Yeah, with Phantom you can you can dodge. Uh, you you stack Phantom on uh, with the uh, the chess piece that you have currently. I think that is the best dodge piece. The Antares, yeah, yeah Antares. Um, you got a, what is a hundred and eighty dodge on your pants? I'm a bit right in there. trouble due to Andromeda and Carnus gems. They don't add any dodge to my build. Yep. Well, hey guys, I hate to cut it short, but I got to jump off on this one. All right, Derange, um, thank you for love uh, to catch up with you guys. All right, definitely jump back uh, when you can. I uh, appreciate you yep. stopping by for sure. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. And uh, damn, Otterman, bringing the heat, bro. I see these bills, bro. I see these replays. Uh, There's more. There's more. I have an idea of something I cannot play because I can't afford an elf. 
Mm -hmm. um, let me see if it's in the saved section. Uh, maybe before I switch over, I show you why a black is not a good option for the three piece if you don't run full accuracy because he can't hit shit. Yeah. You see your many crit gems. Uh -huh. uh, attack gems, no accuracy in the weapon. Uh, he just simply doesn't have enough. It's the same situation as with Craig. He can't do anything. He's just missing. And he's dead before he can do anything. And you, you will also see the quick draw does not trigger any rebound. I can show it again. If you trigger the quick draw, mm -hmm. do damage, it does nothing. So first, we have to do damage. Now we let him go and miss again. And you see quick draw, damage, mm -hmm. no rebound. Wow, yeah. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. So there are several skills that will bypass the three piece rebound damage. One of them is Quick Draw, King's Mind's Eye, Ira's Matrix Firing, Lady and Beast's uh, Destructive Power, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have also the other stuff like Shockwave. Yeah, you hit your enemy slot, and the Shockwave damage does not trigger any rebound damage. That's invaluable information, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. You can see it. I, I run a test. Random mm -hmm. gear, ignore it completely. That's the only gear I had at this point with Canis. So I, I could survive the first interaction. Let's see here. Rushing blow, shockwave. You see no damage by the awakening because my slot is dead before the damage is applied, and then shockwave goes boom. Yeah, no, that's my, I mean, my slot is gone by that point, but it, it did its job and destroyed everything. So maybe that's about the three piece. And I wanted to show something against an elf, mm -hmm. Bengaji. Because he was using something that I was considering before. Uh, we had this talent before. The... There it is. So, you see, I have to say, he does not run any hit skill. So his only damage of source... Uh, uh, source of damage, that way, is curse. And what is he's using here... He is the, using the interference field. So if he misses, which will be 100% the case, since I'm running dodge gear with dodge awakening and stuff, I will not be able to fight back with my front row. Right. So my front row is disabled, but I need to trigger Cassiopeia. But with three slots less, the chances are really, really small. And of course, a big potential damage uh, is also saved in the front row, and they can't fight. So I can only fight with my back row, and that's not going to work out against a full march of elf. Especially he has much higher AI, much more. All right, so ju jump back in with you guys. Yeah, perfect. All perfect. Right. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I'm just talking about a potential elf build that is Gangaji running. So he has no hit skills, nothing, pure stats gems, and he is running the. Stun talent that I can't yeah, fight uh, back. Um, yes, so you can't fight back, but if you're running the same talents, you need to see the problem here. This is where Time Walkers in the front row really comes to play because he's running no hit skills. So what he's doing is is he's um, he's using he's really waiting on curse, right? He's he's yeah. allowing curse to kind of dwindle you down. Um, there is uh, a counter to elf that is really amazing. Um, and I, I mean, you could do it. I think anything that runs, um, that you run status quo with, if you can get status quo and put it on a commander that doesn't have an awakening status quo, Walker troops, no awakening. The awakening is what Hills elf. And that's where you start to lose this game. But if you can run the no hill skill on the front row, Cool part is, is that you're not really, you know, healing anything in the back row. Um, but if you're just hitting one slot at a time and you can stack 
um, you know, AI bots like longevity, you know, things that are going to increase attack or skills that increase attack over time. Um, there is a weakness when it comes to elf, but it takes you being committed to that build. I will definitely not invest into a plugin skill that requires to be level 30 in this meta. It's just too expensive for my for my Yeah, because you're I you're looking for diversity to see what you can do to to beat, you know, the best. So I mean, um yeah, th this is just a bad matchup for Sister Wolf. Uh definitely. I think that you I was you, just you... trying and see what I can do. I was just sending into him because I didn't care. We were like 8 billions ahead at this point and I was just Well, you're still you're still going to you're still going to lose against Elf. Um even if you have status quo, because your awakening skill will continue to heal, you know, the front line. It just doesn't hit hard enough and it feeds elf. That's what she feeds off of. Yeah. It doesn't and, matter what gear you have on her. And real quick, um, let me ask you guys a personal question here. Do you guys really believe that that is the proper shift for the pants? Because um, as far as I know, those pants uh, that elf has on, Right? Regulus. Yeah, yeah. They only reduced like so much damage from the only that first slot. Is that really worth foregoing? Um so I it? I I think it's the first damage received. So I don't know if it's the first slot in a broken okay, yes, fortress, yes, I is. think is the first slot. But yeah. it, it is if you got a high dodge, I don't know, um if you got a high dodge that you're running, um and you know, you've got disabled skills then you may only get hit once or twice around and if it's the hit that could crush you um that stacks really well so i, I don't i see regulus as a really good option um for damage reduction commanders that um understand the the damage reduction you know field but there's so many ignore damage reduction skills out there um you know the formal helmet that uh that you know can counter that as well that you're still, it's going to be a game of inches when you start talking about damage reduction and ignore damage reduction skills. Yeah, because um, for me, effect. the way that I, um, I hate to cut you off, uh, Otter, I just really wanted to bring it up uh, because for me, it's like, okay, they're, those pants, the, they're reducing 40%. When crit wither works, you're reducing double damage, like, you know, crit is double 200% damage. So you're almost reducing 50%. So for me, it's like, aren't the Beetlejuice the better go? Well, so so here, let me talk about his build real quick, and mm -hmm. uh, I wish he had joined us um, so he could talk about it as well. But I'm he's sorry. got. I scared him. Oh, yeah, no, he's he's. We go way back. I like Ngaji. Um So you've got. Uh, a, he's a great player. So if if you go to the um, uh, alderman, right? Alderbon, Alderbon, yeah, Alderbaron, Alderbaron. You know, it's funny. We play with this gear all day long. And rarely do I ever just pronounce it out loud. Alder Baron, right? The, the, the Alder Baron. So you see the crit wither there. So he's he's he is reducing the crit wither by reducing the crit damage, right? He's reducing crit wither will only get you another a uh, hundred uh, percent hit, right? It'll only double the damage, but it doesn't go further than that unless you have crit damage increasers as well. But the crit wither, the Alder Baron, even if it doesn't um, reduce the crit wither enough it can reduce the crit damage pound for pound at 180 plus your 10 percent uh bonus off of this and whatever other crit whether he has you know hidden around but it will pound for pound take off the crit damage so there is an aspect that he's playing you know playing both sides he's playing how do i lower the attack side of it and the total damage how do i lower the crit damage and just take look there's going to be guys that have so much crit especially airship airship has that advantage and when they're running those crit hits and they're trying to do the power hits, um, he he's trying to to be able to wither him down. What's he running on his uh, on his um, plugin? Scroll Status down quo. for a second. Status quo, yeah, that that's about right. So I mean, that's that's a beautiful elf. That is a beautiful, beautiful elf. Um, yeah, not much else I can say about that. Uh, about the regulus, this effect here also reduces mind's eye matrix firing all these ignore damage reduction skills for the first hit that's correct yeah oh, okay so it actually reduces damage of skills that ignore damage reduction correct yeah. it's that the after damage everything it's at the back end of the formula gotcha gotcha this crit right. wither is barely enough to wither the crit damage of the red troops that was his big weakness he got blown up by a black 
completely white. Yeah, but black is not even that. It's not the crit. It's not the crit on black because I run enough crit wither on some of my builds it, and I still get demolished. It is the base attack from the defense that they have. It's the total amount of defense that adds into that attack. And, it, and when it stacks, it stacks so hard with the damage multipliers that they have from the talents um, as well as... Uh, you know, the ignore damage reduction skills. Um, it, it's powerful. And I have yet to figure out um, a build outside of, you know, running Gilly. Um, if you run Gilly with pre, obviously preemptive and canes and wings, um, that, that'll, that'll slam through, you know, black almost 100% of the time. Yeah. Um, real quick, but real quick. That, that, me, go um, ahead. Let me go ahead and um, show love to the chat. Grinch, what's up with you? Welcome. Uh, Thank you for stopping by. Silvano, that's a homie I know in real life. A pleasure to see you in the chat. Chris Din, pleasure to see you. And uh, Stefan, thank you. Welcome for the uh, welcome uh, to the chat. It's the first time I've seen you. Uh, welcome everybody else that's watching, that's incognito. Say something in the chat. Natsu, I see you there. What's going on, Natsu? I'm going to promote your channel in a moment. And uh, I just wanted to give just say what's up to everybody in the chat. And uh, Derange, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so that's... Um... <laughs> That's that's where we're at. I mean, yeah, I think no. it's a pretty good meta. Think, yeah, no. The thank only you for way that. to beat the black is playing a in proper infantry commander like Comets are. Yeah, and, and, and most infantry commanders should be able to, if they have first strike, get through black, or um, you know, you're going to want wings, something that's going to be able to hit it and break through, because um, black is uh, obviously relying heavily on defense, which penetration cuts through, and so you got to think. When you're committing to one set of skills, what are you giving up? By committing to defense, they're giving up HP or damage reduction, survivability. And that's always going to be Black's weakness. The same with, uh, with Dragon Slayer. Um, but Dragon Slayer has a little bit more survivability because Crushing Blow um, is, is unaffected by preemptive or canes. And you still have that just raw damage uh, from, uh, from Dragon Slayer. What do we, what do we got the, oh, yo, real quick. Um, let's let's shift gears real quick, cause yeah, you you piqued my interest with something. We'll jump right back to something. Were you gonna were you gonna bring up something, Otter? Uh, I was just checking if there's anything else interesting in my in my inbox. Here. Yeah, there there was uh, there was. Go back up like uh, go back three or four replays. Um, f keep going, keep going back. Basically, you had a monk. Uh, yes, guys, oh, can you uh, please give the breakdown of monk because. Monk is, you know, I'm an African American brother dude, and I like when I look at the commanders in the game, I'm like, yo, who represents me? Monk is that guy, but I don't know how to play him. <laughs> so, okay, guys. So, yeah. First of all, uh, you can thank me for fixing his weapon. That one was not working until I was spamming the support. That that should be fixed. It was not working at all. Mm. Thank you. So, at some point, they managed to fix it so it can actually snowball the damage. Like it should be. Yes. Um, so everybody, thank Otter for for spamming the support to fix that weapon. Go ahead and give us the breakdown, brother. So I'm using him with absolute suppression as full tier suppression commander. I have a hundred percent tier suppression if I use the correct hole. In this battle, I didn't, but I still won. But uh, you know, my idea is I use him against big kings. We had some. Let's say problems in Kassitan when uh, the guild, the defending guild, is stacking kings. Without, of course, the Sun Raven, they will always have first strike. They ignore everything, whatever, and they just hurt you. So you can run a tier suppression commander like Monk with snowball damage due to his weapon. So you don't need the big stack. You can just continue continuously do damage and then do extra damage by his weapon or by the the walker gems the the equileos gems where is it yeah I, I, so that's the only thing that you know i can really see here i don't see a lot to love about monk um to be honest and and that's just you know looking at this unless you're going like you know again throwing status quo or you know you could throw preemptive and if you've got the walker uh monk is what troops are you running on, Monk? Is that Walker? Uh, yeah, I was using Void Skater to avoid getting sweet. Okay. And uh, ideally, if you would target just tier 11, you want to run one slot of uh, Void Skaters. 
to get rid of these pesky Hancocks with uh, plane walkers. But other than that, you want to use the red troops. Uh, yeah, and, and this is what I'm seeing. I, I don't know. I could see a different, you know, route with this. Um, it's the survivability, right? And it is it is the how much like your sister wolf, how do you combine the two of them? Um, and I, I want to go back and ask you a question of absolute suppression here in just a second, because I see that you did slot that on a monk. But um, looking at this, uh, I see you're going with the heavy attack build, and I see that stacks on the front end. But it looks like his skill really does affect um, normal attack damage to the enemies. Uh, attack is the target. It is, okay, so the weapon itself. Go on the weapon. And what's the special skill? It's, yeah, right here. Can deal additional damage equal to 20% of the target's lost HP. So yes, this, this right here, I know, but this right here is the unique gift that monk can bring to the table because his skills suck they're just like pictor they're going to be uh really bottlenecked off of damage reduction um you, you know normal attack damage you don't have any ignore damage reduction you don't have any uh you know at like this specific weapon makes him uh actually competitive because you you got to figure out how do you get him to survive long enough that the target continually loses 20% of the lost HP. When you have the new talents that keep them from healing, that's a big deal because you're going to find more loss. It's kind of like, um, you know, we talk about rock and, and uh, oh, bullet back in the day, mm -hmm. you know, it, you're, you're ignoring an entire set of, um, of, of skills that you have on there or of um, uh, defense or HP or any, none of those matter. Because it goes lost HP first and then attributes whatever the damage would have been to that uh, loss and in, in slot. It's like Void Skaters um, with the HP hit. Um, that's typically, that's you, you combine that with Dim Light. I mean, uh, that, that would be the next one that I'd probably put on the other um, side of it. Um, if you could do, you know, combine the two of those uh, with Void Skaters, like you said in the back, maybe Time Walkers in the front, so you have a little bit of survivability and healing. I'd probably do Status Quo or something that's going to get me past the uh, uh, you know the first couple rounds. Um, but it, I think this is a ramp up commander, and that's going to be the it, it's it's going to be something that you have to invest long game in um, to to be able to see the benefits from. It's going to be an expensive commander to run, expensive commander to build, and you're going to have uh, situational, uh, like when you go against Black or you go against Dragon Slayer, would probably just crush him. And so those are the issues that I'd see. Now, I see you're uh, running Absolute Suppression. G just give me a rundown. Absolute Suppression seems like one of the most useless uh, skill, passive skill sets to plug in. Help me understand what you're doing here. Uh, my idea is I can go use this uh, setup and go through Max Leadership Kings with all slots full of Tier 11. I just don't take any damage. Yeah, because from T12 to T11, if you have absolute suppression, you're not going to take any damage from T11 is what you're saying. I have, yeah, with this uh, gear setup, I have 100% tier suppression. Yeah, it's maxed out. Maxed out, okay. Yeah, it's not a, like, you know, level 10, absolute tier suppression ain't doing nothing. You need level 30. And then, the you know, the uh, setup that he has, I think it's the chest. Does the chest give more than the Black Knight or about equal? It's the same. Okay. Um, this commander has only one purpose. Now, now would that work? Would that work against like uh, Era and the damage reduction? I guess it would work against King, so it would yes. work against Era too. So yeah, yes. and so that's the problem with you know trying to commit to a commander like Era. It's like we've been here, we've done this. Um, we know what the you know fallacies are. We know what it looks like. We know what it doesn't look like. Like hey, A for effort, dev team, but we we want better. And by the way, um. Uh, I want to go ahead and um, also touch up on that same topic. Uh, you were asking if it worked on Era, right? Do you see the screen right now? Wait, let me see. Uh, I mean, I'm oh, leveling wait. the skills. I will definitely use her. Wow. Wow, There's I had no my arc on the screen it. for a little bit. But yes, um, my bad. I have my arc on the screen. My bad, guys. But yes, um, this right here is proof that it works on Era. You see it? Would you range? On the screen? Yep. yep. This is the same situation. And that era Because it's T11. Yep. But, but uh, well, why is this the same situation? Because this is a hoodoo, right? Yeah, yeah. but that hoodoo is running absolute tier suppression. Um, absolute suppression. 
And so, uh, I'm okay. Hit, hit play real quick. Oh no no this is uh this is they didn't want they wanted to see keep the secret deets they didn't want to send it all out. Oh, but no, okay. Trust me, okay. He, t- he took no loss and the ira the era is running eye of greed. So he was attacking in and got hit and had zero. Yeah. Um, Okay, zero damage. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. And so, Maybe I have so, so I guess I was sh- uh, sorely disappointed that it did not, um, mm-hmm. it didn't compete against like Reinhardt's thorns, right? The the ability to reflect damage even from a T two commander. I, I don't know. I, I felt like that was the dynamic that they should have been going for. Is hey, uh, a T two player should never be able to just crush you know a T twelve player like that. But you know, it is what it is. Yeah, and that name is so hilarious. Utter fans, bro. Oh my! Can you give us? Can you tell us a story about that? Because I know we talked about it off stream, but they need to know. They need to know. <laughs> I, I just switch names every now and then. It's whatever comes into my mind. Uh, no, no, no. But um, show, show them the picture, brother. You was um top three rank in um. Oh yeah, that's what you mean. Okay. Yes, tell them the story, um, bro. I, they have to know that story. That shit is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it was one week ago. Or a little bit longer when we saw the the battle will be in GC against Dom, mm-hmm. and a certain person was like, "Oh, we gonna kick your ass. We gonna destroy you. Whatever. We have so many people with the three piece Sun Raven." And I was a bit confused because I expected to have them like three people with it, but they had more, and I wanted to know who it is. And the best way to find out about your enemies is Old Star. Mm-hmm. So I played All Star like nonstop. I wanted to see what uh, what kind of guys are on that server. Uh, what are they running in case they updated the stuff? I found the last missing guy, by the way. But mm-hmm. uh, I also wanted to know if I can beat Gangaji, Kraken Chicken. So I was trying to get uh, them into my my list here. Mm-hmm. And at some point, I was like really high ranked already, somewhere in the top 80s. And also, I get regular wins by defense because, you know, of course, sometimes just people fuck up. They are unlucky with triggers, whatever. And I shared this to the screen, uh, to the guild, and one guy said, yeah, if you reach top 5, I'm going to rename my arc to uh, Otto Super Friends. I, I thought, okay, challenge accepted. <laughs> and I reached top 3. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, put it on the stream right now. Okay, so what 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 is what are some of the original arc names that I might recognize? <laughs> you cannot recognize me. We never uh, met on the battlefield. Okay, so you're uh, how how long ago did you start? I started when the plugins came into play. <laughs> oh, okay. I, you know, I love I love new players coming in and coming up through the ranks, seeing the the, the beauty of this game. And uh, getting to the front line, when I came out, I remember watching a video of Mel's where he talked about the potential of Pictor, and then I brought Pictor to life with the, the meta that was at the time uh, until um, until damage reduction became a thing and, you know, whatnot. But it was it was fun. It was fun to kind of change the playing field. So I'm, I, I love some of the builds that you're showing. Um, definitely helps me see a little bit clearer coming back into the game. I've been out for uh, about six months now. Um, and there's a lot that's been changed over the past six months. So the dynamic is fun. Seeing that hill though against the sun, uh, the sun gear, that's got to be the cake winner right there. Yeah, I, w- I was like, there must be something, and I, I uh, found this out by accident because in Castleton there was a guy sending plasma into our capital, and I was sitting in front row with Sister Wolf and the healing skill on. Because it really helps against these uh, Reinhards with one slot of T12 in the back. And I was like, why didn't I lose any troops? And then I saw, okay, he uh, got his bomb off and I could heal back fully. And Okay, maybe that will work against Sunraven too. Well, see, that was kind of my battle made. And it's been in a couple Galactic Battles uh, champions or whatever, so I'm not... Not too worried about the uh, secret out there, but Battle Maid was an accident when I figured out it could be uh, Elf when I ran Walker Troops on it. You talk about the high damage reduction when stacked with status quo, and um, man, it just eats it alive. Wow. And um, yeah, and the problem was is that Elf, I wasn't healing any of Elf's other slots. So as I continue to ramp up 
um, you know, lower their defense and, you know, ramp up my own attack and accuracy. So there's a certain point where I would just outpace else heal. Um, but you could run that with Walker and, and status quo on almost any commander um, out there and possibly have a win against Elf. It, that's just the combination. As long as you don't have Awakening. No, that's, um, I think it's beautiful. Um, I know um, it's like, it's like, I know you're probably going to say no, but Deranged, do you have anything you want to throw up on stream? We got my man over here out of showing the works. Do you want to throw anything up or? Mm. Still no. keep it on. All right. All right, that's cool. I had to ask. I had to ask. You know what I'm saying? No, because no, I, I can talk about I can talk about my stuff from last season, season which is fine. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's mine from last season, so it's already been debuted. People have recordings. Everybody knows what what I had. Oh. Um, you know, in the past. Uh, but you know, it's it's uh, any of my stuff would be against these other guys, and and they've got some pretty good builds. So I don't want to get into you know too much of it. You guys are. Um, I, I do love some of the stuff that you're sharing here, though. And so hopefully I've been able to add to that conversation in Discord as well. I, I just don't have any recordings right now. Okay, definitely. definitely. Um, but no, I don't have a recording about certain stuff, but I can maybe shine some light on the advantage and disadvantage of mind map versus steam cannon against elves and other commanders. Mm. Um, you know, what, I mean, we all know how steam cannon works. Mm -hmm. It removes all the heals. The problem with mind map is, let's say you face a Reinhardt, Reinhardt has first uh, strike, he triggers his heal, and then you go with your slot, you trigger mind map, but the problem is, quick draw will trigger the heal before mind map can take it off. So what you yeah. really need to make this one work is a really high trigger rate on mind map. Yes. Otherwise, you cannot beat Reinhardt reliably. Absolutely. And I've said it on um what's your call's name stream on Natsu stream. I, I think my the, the the whole thing about my map that is cool is that uh primarily it's used to beat Orochi. I have to keep reiterating that. That's the main thing. If you throw mind map on Sister Wolf and throw her against Orochi, she's gonna mop the floor with him. That's the main point. Um it's just that also if you have a high enough trigger rate you can also beat Ryan Hart in the same go. You get what I'm saying? Like, in normally before, you would not be able to have Sister Wolf beat both of them in the same go. My map makes yeah. it possible if you have the right setup. Yeah, if I throw on all my trigger gear. Yeah, we've been through this before because Wings have, mm -hmm. has the same base as uh, Mind Map. Yeah, 60%. And you see here, it's 100%. There you go. And how does that work? It... Because I have a 50 set. It's 100%. Mm -hmm. It just goes through my uh, through Reinhardt and Orochi at the same time. Thank you. Yes. At that when it's at that potential, yes, my map surpasses uh, Steam Cannon. Would you not agree? Yes. Thank you. But still, you have a problem. You cannot mm -hmm. use it on every commander. You cannot use it on Elf. Because Elf eats her own heal. What? You remove the, the buffs, mm -hmm. and therefore your next attack does more damage. But you also have he, uh, the Blessing buff, and you will consume it. Wow. Yeah, I see your point there. Interesting. Interesting. That's why I run Mind Map on Sister Wolf and Steam Cannon on Elf in Old Star. There you go. There you go. But that's um what I was trying to confirm to a lot of people. It's... When you have it at a lower percentage, it's primarily used to beat Orochi. Um, Reinhardt, you need more trigger rate. But once you get that trigger rate up, you knock both of them out in one go. And that was not possible before at all. So, yeah. Well, and so that, that's, that's, what's, that's what's interesting. So mind map is typically what, what level skill? Uh, 60%. Okay. 60. So we've got gear that can take 60% skills and move them to 100. Yeah, he just showed that. That's insane. Yeah, so, yes, yeah. No, 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 no. Take that off and put soul absorb on, bro. <laughs> soul absorb. Soul absorb. Yeah, he's talking about it. He's talking about the skill it. from um what's Satalia. That? Yeah, Satalia. Oh, uh, do I even have her? I don't think <laughs> I even have metals. For her. <laughs> yeah, soul absorb all day. If you're gonna run a hundred percent on a skill, oh my god. Yeah, because it just chomps the, the opponent's uh, attack. It eats it. Uh, life absorb, soul absorb. There you go. 
You got to be in the other tab because if you it because it. it it in uh, soul absorb. Yeah, you got to be in the other tab if you wanted to read it. I would just check her. Commander, okay, yeah, please. that works. That works. I mean, honestly, or just run Satalia with status quo, and oh my god, you're going to have one of the best healing commanders that's going to go nuclear on its attack. I mean, this is that that so gear like that throwing it on a command. See, this is what I'm talking about. The potential for Satalia has always been there. Mm -hmm. But now you start combining it um, with the new gear that's coming out. If you can get a hundred percent on the skill trigger, that's insane. Where where does it get yeah, the heal from, though? You said she uh, the first from life absorb, life absorb, Satalia, the first skill. Yeah, click on. Let me see. This attack covers one percent damage. Hmm, that is interesting, Derange. <laughs> <laughs> just, I mean, this is the stuff, dude, I've been waiting for, right? There's a lot of sleeper commanders out there that have great potential, but not in the current meta. So I'd be interested to see somebody throw that together and see how it runs. Absolutely. And especially I mean, you can even mm -hmm. increase the trigger rate more when With you the go full retard on the Mercury weapon. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah, it has trigger rate percent. The three pay, uh, three percent bonus. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, you can combine all that stuff together, and uh, you know, it's. I would suggest, you know, survivability on her because she's going to eat, you know, a lot of the uh, attack as she grows. But you want to be able to um, uh, maybe go high HP and put in, um, you know, feral uh, instinct, and you know, have the HP shield at the beginning to get you through a couple of uh, of rows. Uh, until you're able to overcome it or throw status quo on there or preemptive I like and the, do like yeah i definitely like the status quo one that one sounded bananas yeah yes um status yeah you still have to hit i mm -hmm. saw you still have to hit for her attack. well i mean you could run t11 on her um and do like sleep bomb <laughs> and there's a hundred percent sleep <laughs> i mean oh my god right or put uh dual um you could do like uh dual blades mm -hmm. yeah that's too low dual blades is way too low and um, you know if you you have to but but sleep bomb sleep game. bombs at 60 percent. it doesn't matter though if you've got um if you've got the ability to go twice on an infantry commander you could trigger dual blades twice you combine that with some of the disability skills i, I mean i could just see this going places with the new gear at 100 percent yeah, absolutely. Still he have to consider the, hmm? the shutdown, the, the Canis build. Right, right, right. You, right. Have to get, you have to get around the disable plug-in for the first round. Right, hence why you build a little bit of survivability, especially... And and that's why you have immunity on walkers, though, right? With the immunity talent? Power Doesn't walkers. that counter? Power of walkers also does that, Yeah, too. but tier 11 infantry cannot use power of walkers. Oh, oh that's true. So, okay, do 10, T10... T10 I mean, we can return to my, <laughs> like... to my cheating Hancock build with tier 10 uh, walkers and tier 11 infantry. Why don't you run the 100% the on Hancock then with T11? I, I do. And just, you did, but uh, okay, but wings only goes like seven times, right? Even with 100%? Yes. That's stupid. If it's 100%, <laughs> it should be 100%. Like, oh my god, the match should be over the range in that one slot. Yeah, that's that's. I think so. I, I think people. you. Why? Why? Why do you? It's it's not 100 percent then. On that last round, it's not 100 percent anymore. Yeah, the turn time uh, it triggers, but you cannot mm -hmm. attack anymore afterwards. It just goes to the next slot. Yeah, no, but th that's just the game putting a limiter because at the end of the day, that would be uh, the infinite one slot bust. Like that'd be ridiculous. No, I'm the only one. Infinite one slot bust. Yeah, it shouldn't. It shouldn't be possible. That's yeah, yeah. That, that's just them. That's just them putting a limiter on it. That's just built in. But, but yeah, you that's... can still huh. still run a full disable with the stun talent if you don't have accuracy on your walkers, and it's as good as a 100% sleep bomb because it only disables the front row. Yeah, but seven turns of wings. Not, like... not seven. Five no, is maximum. No, but I'm saying like um, having 100% trigger rate. And then always popping seven on uh, seven turns on Wings of Eternity is bananas, man. I don't even know what to say about that. Man. That's, the that's biggest what... bonus on Mind Map is it's a hit skill. You will hit your attack. I think it's the only 60% hit skill. 
So you're guaranteed to hit the enemy when you have 100%. Right. It really comes in handy if you run Broken Fortress. Okay, so why not put it on Stella with T11? Because Stella T11 infantry cannot use plug in in the first round most of the time. Wait, what? Huh? It's oh, because, minute. yes, okay, because of, of canes. Yep. Yo, yo, deranged. Uh, we have uh, Shafter Rob Trucking says, Stop talking about Satalia, deranged. LOL. Warfront. Do you know him? Warf Warf <laughs> I'd say, hey, he's just mad because he's he's probably all up on it. I, I Look, I don't know anybody running Satalia. I'm not giving away trade secrets. I'm looking at her like like this is fresh, you know, fresh meat here. But yeah, mm -hmm. this could be fun. Hey, bro, if you got it, run with it. I can't wait to see her in action. If you're already doing it, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Innovation yeah. is the main thing about the game. Um, that, that you know that keeps pushing us forward like th and that's uh, another reason why like uh i think melt uh hit the nail on the head with this analogy this game has two types of players and uh, maybe you guys heard me say it two streams ago you're either the zelda player where you're here for all the pve and the wonders and the this and that right and the exploration and the teamwork and the family guilds or you're a dark souls player <laughs> and you're here for for taking souls, <laughs> right? Deleting people and just really uh, having that knowledge uh, that you know the simulation battle knowledge, the uh, the being innovative and creating your own builds, and that's just that unique knowledge of uh, that will take you to the next level. And um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, if you're a Dark Souls player, like what reference is he making? Uh, the reference that I'm making is you could tell a, a Dark Souls PvP player uh, based on what weapons he's using. Uh, there's three weapons in both hands. One uh, in Dark Souls, you could literally combo somebody with R1. Uh, it's R1, R1, L1, R1, L2, and you're basically hitting someone with two weapons in two different hands. And only the PvP people really knew about those combos, while the PvE players would just find a weapon that you couldn't parry and just hold it with two hands and just swing. You know. Anyway, that's the analogy. I think everybody here is a Dark Souls player. Uh, Otter, what are you showing on screen right now? I'm just looking for another victim in All Star. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. I put that. Oh on my screen. god, my mind, my mind is just running crazy with Satalia. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep it under wraps. If you want to DM me, I've got some ideas. But uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Let out a little bit more, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just this just thinking about the ignore damage reduction talent of of uh, infantry, and when you talked about going against Elf, um, I, I think that you could create a damage reduction build. Uh, against elf that doesn't trigger an awakening that would take elf out that satalia could be better than elf i mean could be a game monster yeah let me um, get, can i get a with infantry let me get a um a truthful top five from uh, i'm gonna do one from otter i'm gonna do one from you deranged and then let me after that five top five let's do a fantasy like yo i really do think this character has potential and people are sleeping on them so let me get a walker top five from you otter well, it's always depending what you're fighting against. If we look at the meta right now with all these either black mains or look, these I'll make it easy. Uh, look at the stream. This was like my tier list. Yo, don't ask me why I put Mary over Elf. I just don't think most people can even run Elf. All right, that, that's my only explanation. Most people can't even run Elf. You might as well take Elf's blessing and put it on Mary and run that chick. I think that uh, the devs allowed all the rebound skills to basically go past damage reduction. And that was like a, a low-key meta shift that's not being tested. That's it. That's all I'm gonna say about Elf. Anyway, look at the screen. This is like a, a bootleg tier list. Um, I think the only thing that's wrong here is I, I'm, I'm missing Nick Wang on Hoodoo, um, and then I'm missing Chief. But yeah, go. Ahead. You could look at that screen just to rejog your mind of like what walkers are in debate. Oh, so your top five. Yeah. Okay. There is. A... Yeah, definitely. Sister Wolf is up there. Uh, she's the most versatile snowboarding commander, low risk. Mm -hmm. That's really important uh, that you can run uh, small marches and do big damage. So for me, she is currently at the top. Mm -hmm. um, right afterwards, uh, at this probably Ira. Yeah, I was going to say Ira. Um, at this time, when I released this video, Ira was not released to the game, guys. So don't... No, why is not Ira not on the list? She wasn't even in the game when I released this video. This is an old video. But yes. Ira? So definitely Ira because of her huge potential of damage she can do with tier 11. Uh, cheap to build, 
cheap to heal and big damage possible. Mm -hmm. um, next one, okay, for the Warlord Warriors, we would say Elf. Because I still have trouble with her, as I, as you could see mm -hmm. uh, in the Galactic Battle. Uh, when she's big and has the, the right setup, it's really, really hard for me to fight her. Uh, next one, definitely Hancock, because he's so fun to use. Sadly, I don't have this replay against the black in the, our Kassitan, mm -hmm. but he was completely wrecked. I literally killed 3,000 tier 12 uh, airships with just like 6 or 10 uh, tier 11 troops. He was completely, uh, yeah, mind blown away after that. Uh, last spot. Mm. It's hard. What else is there? There are so many, but uh, I don't really use more than those. Probably, well, probably the, the Picto one because of the potential of crit. That's really annoying if you have no crit with her. Alright, and your fantasy top five. Or was let, it... let the range go with his uh, normal yeah. top five first, so I have some time to. Uh, to yeah, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. The range. Give us your top five walkers. Now, top five. When uh, in what context? Uh, in the context of like, if you're a walker main, um, you're gonna use these five commanders because they they do the job. That's uh, okay. That's well, I, yeah. All right. So here here's what I'll say, especially early game. Um, I mean, you uh, who does like great. You know, early, early game, but he loses his value real quick. Um, Galileo was never great. Um, there's a certain point where maybe down the road the skills look great, but never great. Um, what I, I like personally when I was running early game was Medusa, very versatile, um, and you can play around with her skills. Um, but she she definitely got the job done. You could stack you know different gears and, and really had a, a much higher percentage. Early game, early game, right? Mm -hmm. You lose that. You lose that later on. Um, so top five, and I'm curious why you don't have um, chief. N no, not chief. Um, steam cannon. Steam? steam cannon. Oh, full metal. Full metal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Full metal should be so. So when you talk about a top five most versatile commanders, what do you need to have in your arsenal? It's Hancock. It's King. Mm -hmm. It which might be replaced with era same commander better. You know better uh, um, damage, um, so it's it's Hancock, it's Era, um, it's Full Metal. Um, I like Pictor, but Pictor has lost a lot of his value um, until we get some gear that can kind of push him back up. Um, maybe with the hundred percent wings, like that, that's pretty deadly. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's some room for Pictor in that realm if you've got the money to be able to max it out fifty gear and get your fifty, uh, get your hundred percent. Great. But then Elf, and you can't at any stage discount Elf. Elf is a phenomenal commander, and I think the best when it comes to the Walker side of commanders. I will still put Elf against anybody else. Mm -hmm. Up and coming, um, you know, like I'd already mentioned, uh, Satalia, I'm not a big Zadilla fan. I think that the skill is better on its own um, because Zadilla resets. But why would you reset when you could just keep going? So use the skill without the reset, and you're good to go. And there's a run-on joke in in the community, um, going back to Melt, and before that, mm -hmm. why why do you have Mary up here? Yo, I all? said it, bro. I really do think that um, the devs made it so that if you like, for example, I'll use this example because it's actually relevant. Um, right? I was having. Is there is there a skill I'm missing here with with Mary or something that yeah, I'm yeah. just <laughs> basically her her counter skill, right? You know where she takes a hit and she hits you back, right? Correct. Yes. Same as rockets. Yes. So the devs back in November did an update where it was like uh, Huberian skill and uh, the gem skill, and I'm more than sure her skill was on that list or it's a part of it. Um, those skills bypass damage reduction, and it was around the same time that a uh, Broken Fortress was released. And I had ran a replay with Yoda because they were like, nah, it just makes no sense. And we ran the replay of somebody having broken fortress. And yes, uh, you know, after the person attacks, um, by the time the counter hit comes back, the, the damage reduction is gone. But still, you have to admit if you have. So you're, you're, yeah. you're talking about like Yuri as well? You're talking about counter attacks? Yes. All those skills got a buff 
on the Facebook. They had released it, but in game, if you look, you won't see it. But all those re like uh, return damage skills, they bypass damage reduction. Uh, well, Yuri's gonna be the best then, because it's one trigger and it mm -hmm. you have a it's counter all, on every yeah. yeah every single every yes, single problem. one. Oh. All these skills have one problem: hmm. the damage is calculated by the troops that survived the attack. True, true, because it's the one hundred percent of uh, attack damage. But here, here, hear me out. Here was the thing. Here was the whole scenario. Right now, I was having a conversation with somebody, and they were telling me that, like, on closed servers or like semi-open servers, you have people with the three-piece red Sun Raven, and it's like, bro, those new players cannot deal with that. They they don't even understand the game to deal with somebody rocking that gear. And to me, if they knew that, hey, yo, worst case scenario, bro, you can't deal with Sun Raven. Well, of course, your elf is not online at that early in the game. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You could probably put on gear. You could take elves, uh, or you could take you could take Mary and use her to fight against somebody with a Sun Raven. I wanted that knowledge to be out there because I think that's valuable for especially people on op uh, semi open that are getting smashed by a dude with a three piece Sun Raven. They're like, dude, I don't even understand how to play this game. You know, so that's why I thought the the, the information was valid. But of course, I will agree with everybody else who said. You know, there's other commanders that are more effective for that same job. Uh, case in point, Dragon Slayer with um, Fumo Hall. Yes, awesome. But if you're on open, a semi-open server, chances are you don't have Fumo Hall. I don't even have Fumo Hall. I've been playing for 1.5 years. You understand uh, what I'm saying? So I, feel, I don't know. Yeah, go ahead. Well, so I'm just, I, it's because I know Plasmas ignores damage reduction. So you're saying that they applied the same formula to anything that countered? No, no, no. It was like literally those counters that, that, that take a hit and then hit back. Like Hubarian was the one they listed and uh, the Libra skill. You know when you have like the five piece, uh, four yeah, piece Libra? Yeah, Libra. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that counter, those bypass damage reduction, 100%. It's not even like a small percent. It's 100%. So when I saw that and I I, um, I had shared it on the, I shared it to a couple of people who kept asking me, why'd you put Mary? And we ran the replay. Mary versus Broken Fortress. Mary won. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I really do think for the small people on the small servers who do not have access to a lot, yo, you can run that Mary against dude running the three piece Sun Raven. That's better than nothing because your elf is not gonna be online. But anyway, that was like a, a poor man move. I should have just put elf up there and just said fuck it, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm still trying to figure out the, the game mechanics behind that, the formulas mm -hmm. that would, would allow and just on a on a I mean, cause I, I don't think it would work against Sun Sun Raven. I mean, at the end of the day, you're you're because it's based off of what troops you have left. But if you right. hit them mm -hmm. and then you get destroyed, it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter what damage gets rebound. Or are you saying that? I would have built a uh, the bear the build that I would have built on Mary is obviously the same build you would build on uh, Elf, which is like crit wither penetration or like just more defensive. I wouldn't put uh, a, an attack set on her and be like, yeah, take the hit and then hit him back. I would build a more slow. Uh, uh, damage, uh, crit wither, uh, penetration, HP, and I would also either go blessing or some tank skill. But I would uh, blessing is ten. Just to give you guys an example, like if you get one elf, that's six levels of blessing. Versus if you had elf and then you were trying to go for, you know, status quo is hell of expensive. But um, I, well, I def you you, def you definitely gave me something to play with. I'm gonna yeah, sit there and try play to with factor it and down. And whatever you whatever you figure out, please post it because the posting that I have on my uh, YouTube right now, which is a short, like and it shows Mary versus Broken Fortress, and it's in a short, and it wins. People still don't. Dude, care. the community would go crazy <laughs> if Mary became relevant. Yeah, yeah, because she's a meme. Don't don't speak such things. <laughs> she's a meme. But yeah, for the poor man, I definitely think you would have your Mary online before you have your elf. That was my reasoning there. But guys, don't worry about me. Listen to the pros. Yeah, and then Sister Wolf is is obviously a um, a very very uh, competitive uh, commander. Um, you got to get T twelve. You got to get the right gear. It's not an early game commander, you know per se. Um, but once you get her set up, uh, run them just preemptive, and you, you've got to. I mean, that's pretty meta. Everybody has a sister with preemptive. Yeah. So, what would your top five of and and this top five? I mean, like, think of it like this. This is a given scenario because I know you want a scenario because this game has very different uh, many different facets like. Commanders that are good at GC are not necessarily the same commanders that are good at Cassidy. So I, I want to give you some context. Let's say you're planet side, you know what I mean? And uh, you have access to all the commanders, uh, all the walker commanders. You're only playing walkers. 
and uh you know in your in the capital you know your opponent has like the meta which is the basic ryan hearts you know maybe they have a dragon slayer whatever the case what are the five walker commanders you want to have on deck to go ahead and combat and what an average player would face in a in a capital and just from first most useful second most useful third fourth fifth. well are you are you going for points or when for the win for the dub Okay, if you're going for the win, then you're going to stack up with, I mean, Walker's defense troops are going to be your best. Um, you oh, know, right. first, you can get first strike on T11 commanders, you know, and, and kind of run that. But King is obviously going to be a lineup for uh, uh, defense commanding. Um, but if you're just trying to take the tower, Elf is where it's at. And that's, um, it, it's between, whether it's going to be between Void Skaters with HP hit or her curse, Um um, you're going to see the dynamic of walkers change pretty drastically when people figure out the talents and the new gear um, and, and that that dynamic there. Um, but I don't know. I'm still running battle made with walkers and everybody hates me for it. But <laughs> I, will, I will put money on it. Yeah. The way you're doing the battle made thing is, is my faith I have in Mary. I think she's, gonna, she's low key. And remember, she has a weapon that literally says... Um, Every time that she procs the counter, it increases the proc, the counter proc chance by like 20% or something like that. It's just that it's unfortunate the weapon is uh, increased crit damage instead of like, I mean, increased crit chance. It's penetration and increased crit chance. And then it says every time that she procs that counter skill, she gets more uh, percent chance. But we can move on to a different topic. Let's, let's get to something else. I think everybody got the gist of the tier list. Pretty sure everybody's tired of me explaining the Mary thing. <laughs> Uh, range. What happens if your battle mate faces mind map commander? I win. You sure? Yes. Because mind map steals status quo. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's like mind map steals uh, status quo. That is a very so you you cannot really do damage because you're running walkers on a airship commander, and you're yeah. you're. Damage reduction gets stolen. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, so you're saying that I lose damage reduction, the status quo, I lose what I've gained already, or you're gaining it too? Uh, I mean, I steal it from you, so you lose it. And I, I, don't think I, lo I don't think I lose it. I think that you just gain the benefits from it. No, no, you lose it because yeah, my, that's why go, go my ahead. map beats Elf. Yeah, go ahead and put it on my, my map so you can see it on the screen. Yeah, it takes the buff. Uh, it completely swipes it. But it's a passive buff, and so that's different. I, I, I understand this. It, have we seen this happen? Passive buffs work completely different than um, than plug-in buffs, meaning that, like at the beginning, preemptive never gets taken, right? It's always so, preemptive. Absolute defense always is absolute defense. You don't take somebody else's absolute defense from them. You might be able to steal the benefit of it, but you're not going to take it from them. Yeah, I think what Durant is saying is basically you can reset it when you when you swipe it, but it's I don't still, even know if it resets it because the skill itself says cannot be reset till end of battle. Yeah, like it goes through that? to end of battle. It stacks. If, if unless you've got unless you've got an actual replay showing me that, uh, it's I'm not I'm not playing ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. Um, can we how do that? we do this now? Yeah. Well, we can uh, if you have the time, brother. I don't know what you. Give me a second. It will kick me out of my account for a second. All right. This is be oh, yeah, we knew it was an alt account. Yeah, what? The <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, we do not support uh, resource buying or alt accounts. Uh, these are paid actors to have these conversations. And I just bring have up these bad topics. connection. What are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. Bad connection. You know okay. how the internet drops out? Check your network. Yep. Okay, I checked my network. His network is fine. There you go. All right, there we go. There we go. These are paid so, actors. So, what I'm going to do is... <laughs> Uh, this is this is tricky because I just want to work with status quo. Mm -hmm. So probably. And this is a really good test. Way. And um, once again, uh, thank you, Derange, and thank you for Otter for you know uh, being able to have this conversation at this high level. You know, um, it really does a lot for the community because uh, I think walkers are the most quit class. Like a lot of people quit walkers because they don't understand how to play them. Effectively. Oh, and I think they're one of the best classes, mm. especially with the new talents coming out. I think they got the best talents. Mm. That's interesting. That's good to hear. So you hear here first. Elf here. Do I see an elf? 
Dude, he made shit reappear. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, that was the highlight of the stream. When that slot disappeared and it came back, it was just yep. like, done. Houdini. I mean, there's there's no bigger fuck you in this game than, I killed all his slots. What the fuck happened? <laughs> you know? Yeah, that shit was old. He just won't fucking die. That shit was priceless. Let me run any commander with status quo and walker troops. Because I don't need uh, to be... It doesn't need to be an elf, right? It's yeah, it doesn't need to be an elf, no. It's just the effect of... Yeah, we're just looking for a status quo. We're trying to reset passives at this point. We're trying to see if status quo can be stolen. By main, uh, mind map. By mind map, yep. If it can be not stolen, like as in you taking some of the attribute, but actually taking the attribute from that person as well. Yeah. I think you might be able to duplicate it and take the effects of it, but I, it's it's a passive skill, and we've seen passive skills work in a very different way than plug-in skills. No, no, absolutely. I think uh, uh, both both of you have a, a extremely valid point because this is a unique game where you know um, we have to test those things. It it can take a long time now. Uh, so, would you say that you proved your theory? No. I wouldn't say about that, but I mean, he doesn't get immune. And you. Which one? So, are we talking about. Wait, which one has status quo? The Sister Wolf, right? The Plasma one. Oh, you put status quo on uh, Plasma? Yeah. Okay, so status quo is on Plasma. Um. It depends how, it, but here no, but here's here's the problem is, it if you get past the, you're not going to get past the second line of defense. If she gets past the second line of defense, then um, then it then status quo worked the way that it should. But because you already started to take away damage, and there's no hill skill on the front line, which is why time walker is better. But um, on the front line, what's going to happen is um, you will dwindle away, Sister Wolf, because of the. HP that ignores damage reduction, right? And status quo just builds damage reduction all the way up. But with this, because you're not hitting any of the back row, the back row will still stand. So all the voids are going to be dead. Back row is going to be standing. Go ahead and hit the, the uh, fast forward and you'll see. Boom. Mm. Right. Good shit. Yeah. So the status quo stood. You didn't take the status quo from them. Status quo is still standing, even against mind map. Got you. There you go. And that that once again, guys, you think you know Arc of War, right? <laughs> Until you can uh, read a, a match like that where you say press forward, the whole first <laughs> row is gone. And then you see it. The man knows what he's talking about. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking to the viewers. I know Otter's proved his, his you know, we're not talking about Otter. We're talking about the viewers. We know the viewers were like, yeah, yeah, he's just talking. He doesn't know what he's talking about. As soon as you hit forward and you watch that whole f first row disappear, you realize you don't know the game like these people do. You know what I'm saying? Point proof. Yeah, 100. percent All right, this is enough. All right, cool, cool, cool. I need Where, to... So, okay, so what are we looking at here? I just added one piece, and then it's fine. Yeah, because, because you're. It's the formal. Yeah, exactly. Because you're. You are being able to um, take away from the back row because the formal hel formal halt uh, helmet will um, at least start chipping away to where your quick draw can start taking over. So that's the power of Sister Wolf. And if you don't have heal on the commander, obviously Plasma didn't have heal, um, it, you're not going to be able to keep up. So if you can keep rehealing, there's there's something there, but eventually you got to be able to to fight back too. So you need a little bit of attack or some AI bot or something that combines and gives you the ability to punch back. But that just means that the battle mate still can't survive against any commander that's running this one. Because status quo will not negate any damage, it will always come through a certain fraction of it. And you have no heal on air. Or am I wrong now? Because that, that battle mate really triggers me when I see her with tier 12 walker troops. Yeah. Hold on. Uh, yeah, so you want to use time walkers in the front, typically, because you're going to have some hill, and then you combine the hill on top of that. Um, but yeah, eventually, it's it's you got to have some type of 
uh, gear set up that's going to start hitting back against Sister Wolf. Because um, Sister doesn't have a heal. Well, but now you do with the talents. So it's interesting. It still works. Maybe it doesn't work if it's full time walkers, because then it's just too much. Well, I mean, you're running one piece of gear here against status quo. And so status quo is only one part of the entire puzzle. When well, you start that's... talking about damage reduction, right? The, the damage reduction, um, you're going to slow roll uh, the, the hit on that. No. <laughs> Don't call that defensive gear. There is nothing there. Hey, sis Sister Wolf is, I mean, Sister Wolf is, is pretty badass. I'm not saying it's not. She has one of the best uh, skills. Not only quick draw, but deadly impact is great. It does so much damage. Yeah, correct. Uh, I had it. I removed it again because that damage, uh, it's. Uh, not ignoring damage reduction. No, and that's the whole thing. When you start going back through the gems and you go through, I mean, that's it's it's like a twenty percent damage increase skill um, that you would get from just some of the old gems. I mean, if they're not ignoring HP uh, or ignoring damage reduction, what's the point? You you will see it when you face an enemy that has the uh, AI one combat AI with the HP shield. You see a big fat zero showing up when this comes into effect it does nothing you have to get rid of the hp shield first and uh, it's just not worth it going for the full step they make they make it up in talents Yeah, it's a bit rude. Infantry got the short one again. I ran through everything I think I had in mind. I mean, I, I showed all the replays, the fancy uh, stuff, the cheating stuff. Yeah, I'll say honestly, man, I think that um, that just between those those three topics, you've got uh, enough for people to go home to on. Look up and see if the counter damage, the counter damage from Mary to, you know, the, uh, the walker's ability to heal out of freaking nowhere. <laughs> to... Um, you know, status quo, uh, and, you know, some anti-elf builds. Um, yeah, it's the, the game is always changing and I appreciate guys like you keeping the conversation alive. That's what keeps this game alive and makes my account not useless. So. <laughs> Yeah, he was messing me. Yeah, don't don't uh, chicken out. Fight me, fight me. I mean, he's gonna. Who's that? Me. Who me? No. Uh, I I ignored his simulation battle, so he was just. Hold on, let me switch the hole. Let me do this right. I mean, I have a small march, my standard march for capitals. Let's see what's doing. Probably... Yeah, you're gonna win that. I mean, that's it's. Ah uh, yes, Gemini, I think. Yeah, okay, okay. We we going serious. I just full march. That's what I have, right? Six thousand and a bit 
chunks. Yeah. That's not a lot. Ha! Oh, I have to update it. Ha! I'm an idiot. It made the, the preset, but not the troops in the sim. Yeah, you should win this. Yeah, I mean, with this gear, uh, it's just, you know, Regal sucks. Look at his gear. <laughs> hey, I mean, look, there you go. You got it. I mean, this gear is far away from reasonable. I <laughs> I can tell you. I can tell you what the problem is here. The problem is is that he doesn't uh, have enough dodge to get past some of the regular hits. So you are absorbed. See, watch. As soon as he gets past the first round, well, with the formal helmet, yeah, you should probably get past the second row as well. But you should be able to survive a little bit more. You got to have. Yes. Yeah, what I yes. found is is you got to have at least one Alkyde on it, you know, to have you some damage and to have some accuracy. Start hitting yes. back. Zero research on walkers. He has no gear. It doesn't matter what he's running. He's just getting wrecked. Yeah, of course. So there you go. The battle made is trash. You heard it here yeah. first, folks. Yes, finally. Throwback. What's up, Pickle? <laughs> yeah, shout out to Pickle. <laughs> What's up, bro? <laughs> Yep. Is that Yep. I can already say you have too much gear. No, it's it's really important to get this uh, in the in the mind of every uh, smaller player. You cannot run five commanders with five gear sets. It's not possible. 
at least if you're uh, not intending to spend a lot. Hey, so what, what uh, plugin were you running on Sister Wolf? No, I'm saying uh, Otter. Uh, all kind of stuff. Uh, Steam Cannon, uh, Mind Map, Preemptive most of the time. Sometimes Wings. Yeah, you should get these. Hold on, pull pull up your pull up your king again. Yeah, I would instant I would instantly go to your event. What's the event right now? Want the, go to the your yeah, go to your yeah, go to your time limit. Okay, go down. You see those two soul cutters? Go up. Yeah, go go put those on your king. Yeah, get get both of those and just run your king up and then have fun. Yeah, it's it's actually really really cheap. That that event is really cheap to be able to get those those items. Assault. You will need this. Yep. There you go. And you've got then you just run that gear up and get at least a hundred percent pin and you're you're good to go. Just don't upgrade your accuracy. Yep. That that's always a good one. And then and then and then uh you know, Elf is just leadership. Um, you know, all, all the other ones. So Elf is leadership. Rock is leadership. You know, Rock is, if you really want a good one, go get a bullet. At this point in the game, just go grab a bullet. Um, but, of course, with damage reduction, that's really lowered the effectiveness of both Rock and bullet because they both go off of damage reduction. Um, so that's that's the issue there. So that puts King at a better running as far as your damage ability, um, no matter what leadership you have. Uh, again, you just run those soul cutters up. That's a lot of attack, a lot of penetration with that helmet, and you've got the right gear. Um, 
you, you're just looking for first strike. Uh, Elf is going to be a leadership horse. She's just going to eat it up. So, I mean, that's going to be something you have to dump into. Um, but it does make her curse, you know, really good. Anybody that's doing like a little one uh, slot marches or a couple, two, three slot marches, it's pretty funny when Elf just one by one takes them out of the picture. Uh, Hancock, I mean, run sweet. You want to be able to kill as much with as you know little as possible. But your your best one out of this is Sister Wolf. And uh, I did uh, just get some private messages. Sister Wolf does destroy Battle Maid, so I, I will definitely yield on that one. Don't do it. Yeah. I mean, Elf is really a, an all or nothing commander, you know, and you could, you know, put her there early on and, you know, have some success, but ultimately there's going to be a bigger, better Elf somewhere else. And it's really the best Elf wins. So if you're really looking for um, free to play, you know, or low spend play, then you're, you're going to be Sister Wolf or you're going to be King. And those are going to be your slots, Hancock. Um, I think those are your three options, you know, between the, the three of those, uh, cause you're not going to find a lot of people that are running absolute defense on their, on their builds. You go against absolute defense. That's where your sister wolf comes in. Uh, yeah, I think rock is pretty useless at this point. You don't go by just looking at your commanders. You go by and look what's going on on your server. What are you facing regularly? I can imagine it's Reinhardt. So you just go Sister Wolf. That's really easy. You can go Sister Wolf there. Of course, with mind map, it's a little bit uh, struggling. You could go with Elp right away. Also need Steam Cannon, of course. But uh, usually uh, you should win with a big Elf against a big Reinhardt because of the blessing. I like Full Metal. I think that there's I think there's a place where he'll come back as a main commander. Um, we're just not there yet. Yeah, hey, hey, brother, glad I could help. <laughs> I don't, I don't farm. Nobody is hitting my tiles. Um, maybe a message to these wannabe invaders from the, uh, I don't know, the lemming train from DZG. You can go home. You will not achieve anything here. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, I think it, it, it was, it was nice. I was nice. It's really rare. You can be happy that I was not uh, shit talking. So yeah, maybe to the next time. And it's really, really time for me to go bed now, you know, old Orlan needs to sleep. Oh man, yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, to the original ZGL crew and to win and you know everybody in win and CHN. I mean, honestly, it's what makes this game. You got to find your game. You got to figure out where you fit into the new players out there. Um, there will be some that want to go all the way and figure this thing out. This game is here. It's alive and well. Um, there's new stuff that's coming out. Uh, you, there's a slight advantage of coming up through the ranks right now. Um, so I, I just, that's my heart is, you know, let's keep the game alive. Let's keep it going. Let's keep these ideas flowing because 
it's the idea that keeps you awake at night and you don't want to stop until you get that first win where where you were able to get the one up on your competition and um that's what this is about it's fun it keeps you thinking keeps you alive we're in this thing together um you know you get hit take your licks take a little bit of time heal back uh there'll be a different fight and you'll be able to come back with a different grind so uh that's my shout out uh love you guys and uh yeah let's uh i'll see you in the battlefield all right absolutely i just realized i have my mic muted for a little bit so only you guys heard me that's kind of funny anyway <laughs> um the last thing i'll say is uh you know this is the rangers page guys definitely follow uh the rangers page even though this is um you know a kind of outdated content but there's still a lot of fundamentals of arc of war that uh you will find uses for so definitely follow the rangers page here it is on the screen also uh on my page you will also see we have last shout outs that i wanted to do here sabin ditroff uh sabin dimitroff uh follow his page he has a ton of arc of war content he definitely tried to make this episode um that next level better so shout outs to him and once again shout outs to mel still doing things behind the scene for arc of war ladies and gentlemen the the legend himself the goat <laughs> all right and um with that, uh, I just want to thank everybody for watching at this point in time. Uh, that's it, man. We gave you guys gold, man. I hope you guys go back and, like Derange said, chew on that. All right, so peace. Red, don't let me go and pray.